Hello, friends, and welcome to a Jakiro guide. It's finally happening. I know. I've played a lot of Jakiro, spammed him from Divine 1 up to Immortal, now sitting in top 1,000 in North America, flexing a little bit there. But really, I did play a lot of Jakiro. 280 games, maybe not so much compared to some other hero spammers, but still have a pretty solid win rate, and I think I learned a lot about the hero. So we're here to share that now. If you're not interested in a long video, feel free to check out the timestamps in the description. Maybe skip to something you are more interested in. But I've also written up some notes in the client. I made a cleverly named guide, Jakiro Support by me. Whoa. And I wrote up some notes on the different items, skill builds, everything there. So if you'd prefer that, feel free to go there instead. But with that, let's talk about Jakiro. Let's start with some pros and cons of the hero in no particular order. Jakiro has great AoE damage in all of his abilities. I guess not Ice Path. Ice Path does 50 damage right now. But everything else does a good amount of damage. And everything besides his ultimate also has some kind of utility. Uh, mostly a move speed slow or an attack speed slow. And because he has so much damage, he's great at wave clear, which makes him excellent at defending towers or pushing waves to the enemy base. And once he gets to the enemy base, his ability, Liquid Fire, can actually damage enemy towers and slow the tower's attack speed as well. So that makes him great at pushing towers. He's got high starting strength, which means that you're probably not going to get burst down in the lane if you get out of position a little bit. And later in the game, when the enemy starts to get stronger, yeah, maybe you'll still get burst down, but it'll be harder than bursting down some of the other more fragile supports. So he's a little bit more survivable, very beginner friendly in that regard. Now, these next two points may seem kind of funny, but he does not need items to be effective. So if you're in like a, a 1k game with four, uh, a four core lineup, it'll be okay. You're dirt poor, you've got brown boots, but your spells are good and you will be effective. Now, in that same 1k game, if your cores are not really farming very efficiently, they're all in the jungle, the lanes are empty, and it's up to you to push them out, you get a lot of gold, great, you're going to scale pretty well with items. You've got a lot of things you can and do like to buy, but often don't have the money to buy. So in one of those kind of games, or say it just goes on for a very long time, you do scale decently as Jakiro. You've also got a flexible skill and item build, so you can adapt to every game at least a little bit. Um, so Maybe you need a lot more wave clear, you can build towards that. Maybe you just need to provide a lot of stuns, you can build towards that. I think that flexibility makes him a very safe pick in many games because he will always be able to do something to impact the game. Now some downsides of the hero. He does have a very short attack range and he's slow. So this can lead you to put yourself out of position a little bit, especially in the laning stage, mitigated a little bit by your high starting strength. But still, it can be a bit of a downside. It is hard to harass with right clicks as Jakiro. You've also got some really long cast points on your abilities. If you're not familiar with that term, that is when I press Q to cast Dual Breath, but then Jakiro has to go, Ooh, and then cast a spell. And it takes a long time. In that time, someone could cancel it with a stun or say a mini stun, such as Battery Assault, just standing right next to you. You're pretty much never going to get a spell off, and it's pretty annoying. But even if no one is trying to stop you, you're just kind of slow to cast spells, and it can be easy to miss things. Um, even after a lot of Jakiro games, I still miss things. But with some practice, it's not too bad, and you can get around this. You are also weak to dispels in the laning stage. So generally, Jakiro is an all right laner, strong to average. But in certain lanes, when they have a dispel, it can be really tough because your dual breath and your liquid fire are both dispellable. And because we just said you're not very good at right-click harass, well then, uh, what do I do in this lane? And it kind of sucks. But you still get by by doing a lot of pulls, and that's just a, a weakness you've got to learn to play a hero. No one, no one can be perfect. With those characteristics in mind, let's lay out a very general game plan for Jakiro. In the laning stage, you want to look for effective trades with dual breath, and to a certain extent, some free harass from liquid fire. Effective trades... Like, that is a key word there. A big mistake I see from many Jakiro players is they just throw out dual breath for damage. But that is really bad. Dual breath actually sucks level 1 in terms of damage for the mana cost. However, the fact that it's AoE means you can hit multiple heroes. And it has a move speed slow 
and attack speed slow attached to it, which means if you are trading right clicks at that time when the enemy is affected by dual breath, you get these effective trades. And if you do that, Jakira is a pretty decent laner in most matchups, minus the whole dispellable thing. Now, in those dispellable lanes, if that happens, then you're just going to be looking to pull and stack a lot. This isn't really exclusive to Jakira, like every support does this, but this is what my lane looks like every game. I go to lane, I try to throw out dual breath a little bit, and then I go pull and stack. If I can't really do the whole dual breath thing, then I'm doing a lot of pulls and stacks. If it's really important for me to fight a lot, then I'm doing a lot of these dual breath trades, and I'm going to buy items towards that. Once you get out of the laning stage, into the early game, there's kind of two general things you should look to do. One is that you're pretty good at defending towers if you have maxed your Q, the dual breath. This pretty much kills off an entire creep wave. And so if no one on your team wants to be in the safe lane, for example, you sit there, you max Q, you defend it as long as you can. If you get killed, ah, whatever, you're a position five, it's okay. And you get some farm from those waves, you delay the enemy team, hopefully for a few minutes, but you know, don't just feed for like, oh, I held the lane for like 10 seconds, you know, that's not great. But if you can safely hold a tower for, say, a minute to two minutes, anywhere above that, that is pretty good. Now, if you're not needing to defend things, then you're looking to push things. Go join up with some of the rest of your team and look to push towers. This does not require you to max Q. You could have your stun. We'll talk about skill builds in a little bit. But then you're looking for that kind of group movement. Jakiro does not do a lot on his own. He does put out a lot of damage once he's hit six, but it requires people to stand in macro pyre. So you really want to be with your team pushing towers so that when a fight breaks out, you've got your stun and hopefully some other people's stuns, keeping the enemy in macro pyre, and then you get a lot of value out of your abilities that way. Um, but all that to say is that you're either by yourself defending towers usually, maybe with some team, but often by yourself, or you want to be with people and typically pushing towers. Now, as you enter the, to the mid and late game, that still holds true. You still want to look to defend towers, but maybe a little less because at this point, people could dive and kill you. You are just a position five. So it is something good for you to do, and especially keep in mind that you can macro pyre and defend an entire wave. But, you know, be careful. Don't just feed. Now, when team fights break out in this mid to late game, the main thing you want to do stay near the edge of fights and look for multi-stuns. Try to line the enemy heroes up, ice path, dual breath, macro pyre, you know, it's not just stuns, everything. You're trying to look to hit a lot of enemy heroes with your AoE abilities. That's why it's important to stay near the edge. If you get into the middle of the fight, you got a hero over here on your right, hero over here on your left, and you're like, uh, all my abilities go in a straight line. How do I hit both these guys? It's really hard. But if you stand further back and you let someone else on your team go in first, and the enemy heroes converge on that guy, then it's very easy for you to just land a uh, straightforward spell. So try to stay back. You are slow too. So if you if you get inside a uh, close range fight, you know, you've got the strength to survive a little bit, but you just can't do much and it's gonna be really hard to get out because you're so slow. So stay near the edge and then look to apply your slow to the enemy carries either through the dual breath because it is a move speed slow and attack speed slow, but especially the liquid fire. That is very easy for you to apply to the carries, and it's one of the most impactful things you can do. It is a lot of attack speed slow, and if you just keep throwing it on the carry every four seconds because it's late game, all your stuff is maxed out, then they're just not going to output as much damage. You're going to keep the blinks canceled, things like that. I think it's a great thing to, to keep an eye on. Um, look for opportunities to do that in the mid to late game. So now I want to tell you guys some details about each of his spells that I think you should know if you're trying to learn Jakiro and, you know, play him seriously a bit. First, Dual Breath, and in fact all of his abilities, can be cast further than you might initially believe. So here on Dual Breath, you can see the cast indicator shows it ends before any of those axes, but actually if I just ground target it, I will hit... Oops, actually missed this guy a little bit. I hit the three axes. It's because the animation goes in a little cone and it goes a little further than this so this is about your max cast range we were even at the the very edge there we even missed and one of those casts so it looks like that that's good to know so that if you're casting it uh chasing a hero and you're trying to cast your spell if i clicked on axe here i would have to walk up and then cast the spell 
but that does waste about a second. So if you're ever in a kind of this chase, it's like very critical for you to get a spell off, it's good to ground target and try to hit these, these axes. In fact, you even should just ground target in general. You can, for dual breath, cast it on a specific hero, but if they are, say, close to you or very fast, this can be bad. So for example, maybe there's another axe. I want to hit this axe and this axe. But if I actually click on him and then he moves, okay, in this case, a cast in time. Hold on, wait. And then he moves. I actually turn to the side like this and now I miss. But that could be avoided if I just aim at the ground and time it for when he walks in. Now I hit both of these heroes I was aiming for. So ground target this ability. The burn damage, I kind of mentioned this earlier, it sucks. So it says 20 there, but a little more details on that. You don't do 20 damage every second. You do 10 damage every half second. That would lead you to believe that level one, you do 100 damage, but that is not true. They changed it so that dual breath applies its first instance immediately. What that means is you have 11 instances of damage. So it's actually 110 damage at level one, 220 level two, and so on from there. You take half of the burn damage value times 11. That is your actual damage. Level one sucks for the mana it costs. It's 110 damage for 140 mana. That is a really large amount. It is not at all efficient. If you only use Q for damage, your lanes aren't going to go well. If you've ever played Jakira and you feel like you don't do well, that might be one reason. You need to make use of the move slow and attack slow to get in some extra auto attacks. That is what make du makes Dual Breath a really good level one spell. If you don't do that, then it is very, very mediocre. You'll run out of mana and find that you really haven't gotten in much damage at all. Now, speaking of that move speed and attack speed slow, when we cast a spell, you'll notice ice and then fire. It's actually two separate instances that get affected, um, that affects heroes. So the ice breath does the move slow and attack slow, and the fire breath does the, the burn damage. It is possible to be affected by one and not the other. It happens when you're chasing uh, at the very edge trying to hit someone and they only get hit by one. If you've ever wondered why, that is why. Uh, one other thing about the burn damage. The reason why you should know that it does its damage in different instances. One, it ca it cancels blinks immediately, so that's that's great. And two, for TA, her refraction, you can burn off all the charges fairly quickly because you do damage in half instances. It's also useful to know if you play a lot of ability draft, but nah, we're not going to worry about that. Ice Path next, again, can be cast further than it looks, so that I that axe is actually outside of the the cast range they there we go we can stun him good to know again if you are quickly trying to get to someone they are tp'ing out you got to cast this as soon as possible you can cast just a little further than what it looks like another good thing to know is that it actually will stun units behind you so if you're being chased don't waste time turning around and casting the spell it's a very long animation just cast it in front of you and then keep going and then Axe will get stunned. You kind of saw he got stunned at the very end there. He was a little too far. Let's do it again. There you go. Stunned at the very end in the back there. I don't know why I paused right there. Um, so that's good to know. If you are being chased, throw this out in front of you. Don't waste time turning around. This, because of the formation delay and the long cast point, this is the spell you're going to miss the most. It's just it's just a little bit of a practice to get used to it. But you, you will have to kind of predict where they're going to be in Ice Path that way. If you miss some, don't feel bad. I miss some, and I I play so much Jakira that I'm making this guide. So, you know, don't feel too bad. I can't believe I forgot to mention it because it's one of the most important parts of this spell, but you actually get vision along Ice Path, which means see this high ground, you cast Ice Path, you can see up here. This is most applicable for dewarding cliffs. It'll let you put sentries on the ground and then Ice Path onto the cliff. I must be getting quite forgetful in my old age because there's another thing I forgot about Ice Path that is quite important. It is a persisting stun. That means that you don't have to directly hit a target with it to stun them. You can cast it, and if they move into it, they will be stunned. So, for example, Wraith King walks into it, and you see he gets stunned. Ice Path can only stun once per cast, though, once per hero. So, if Ice Path goes out, Wraith King walks in, he can now be dispelled strong dispelled and he can move an ice path and he won't be stunned once more now this persisting stun gives it some flexibility in how you use it for example 
the classic combination is Yules. You Yules the target, you Ice Path below them, and they fall into the stun. If they have BKB, they can still get out because Yules is a little weird, but you get the idea. It's this setup where they fall into the stun. They get pushed into the stun by a teammate, something like that. Now, for example, Jug with his spin, as it gets close to the end, you can Ice Path on top of him so that when the spin ends, he will be stunned. Thankfully, he was stationary for us and didn't move out of the spin, but you get the idea. Say he Jug ults, as it starts to end, you throw out Ice Path, he falls in and dies like that. Wraith King or Aegis, he dies. Then you Ice Path on top, so when he respawns, he is instantly stunned and can't do anything about it. There are a variety of things like that in the game. I think you get the idea. Ice Path is very flexible in that regard. Uh, it's easier to land the timing compared to something like Lena's stun, which has that same delay, but then you have to hit it right before you need it. Um, you have a bit more leeway with Ice Path. Liquid Fire is an attack modifier, so it doesn't give any stick charges. You can set it to auto cast or manually cast it, but you should manually cast it. So here, if it's on uh, auto cast and then I right click this axe, you see I walk into my attack range and then use it. But actually, Liquid Fire has a much larger attack or cast range. So if you manually cast a spell, it will give you 200 extra cast range for this. That is quite a lot. So manually cast this ability. The damage instance on this one is half seconds as well. So it says 12 burn damage, but it actually does six damage every half second. You do not get that extra 11th instance of damage. So at level one, it is 60 damage and math, so on and so forth. It does affect towers um, and through fortification for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, but it does, and so it's great for taking towers and slowing this tower's attack so that your creeps last longer. Shard works in the, the same way. So if you set it to autocast, you'll walk up to the 400 attack range, but if you manually cast it, you'll get the extra 200. This also works on towers, but it, it does not do half-second intervals. This is... 2.5% of the max health damage, all that, every second. So four instances of damage. Now, a little trick you can do with these two, at least at this point, because it does seem like a bug. I don't really know why. If you set E to auto cast and then you manually cast Liquid Frost, you will actually apply both at the same time. They literally patched this as I was editing clips. So it doesn't work anymore. Can't really complain it it did seem like a bug so i'll leave this in mentioned just in case tested in the future maybe the interaction will come back i don't know macro pyre last one macro pyre once again goes a little further than the cast range about here there you go so you see we can actually hit that axe outside of the macro pyre cast range macro pyre's damage is also in half second intervals so it does 50 damage every half second the only other thing you really need to know about macro pyre is that it applies a debuff that lingers for two seconds what that means is that you just have to touch someone to do two seconds worth of damage or 200 at level one so this axe he touches it walks out two seconds of damage there so if someone stands in macro pyre for three seconds that is 300 damage. They then walk out of Macro Pyre. They will take two more seconds of damage for a total of five seconds of damage, 500 damage. Mainly, you want to know this in team fights or chase. Someone is like getting away with 100 health and you just touch them with Macro Pyre. You don't actually have to, like, they don't have to stand in it for a second. You just touch them and you will kill them. Uh, in a team fight, it's nifty to know so that, you know, oh, they didn't stand in Macro Pyre. What a waste. It's kind of okay because you still get that lingering damage. Of course, you want them to stay in Macro Pyre, but it is good to know that it has that, that linger. So now that we talked about the abilities, let's go ahead and discuss the skill build. Almost every single game, I do a build that looks like this. In fact, this is, this is the build. Level 1 Dual Breath just has the most potential out of all the abilities. Ice Path, very little damage, so even though you stun them, you don't have any damage for it. Not very good. 
Liquid Fire costs no mana, which is a good thing for Liquid Fire, but as your level 1 ability, it means that your passive mana regen is going to complete waste. And the damage on it, like, not that great compared to Dual Breath, which, although Dual Breath isn't that cost-effective either, it's still better than Liquid Fire. So Dual Breath, level 1. Then, I kind of hinted at it, but Liquid Fire, because it costs no mana, it is this free extra harass, and this attack slow, so that if you are singled out by, say, the enemy 4, you can hit them with both of these spells and have about 60 attack slow on them and win that trade. Ice Path, you just don't really have enough mana for these two abilities. We said Dual Breath, not very good level 1. We can fix that. Let's get a second skill point in it. And from here on, it's pretty good. 4. I like the value point in Ice Path. This now gives us a way to cancel channels, uh, mainly the teleport. But if they happen to have a channeling ability, great Ice Path. This is pretty much it for uh, level 4. Now, Ice Path, I will sometimes take at level 2 or 3 if I know it will lead to a kill. That means we're in the middle of a chase. They're a little bit out of my attack range, though. I Dual Breath is on cooldown. My carry has no spells. All right, Ice Path to hit them, catch up because of the stun. Fine. I have to know I am going to get a kill or very close to a kill to get Ice Path. And it has to be in the middle of the attempt. Like, I have to level up while we're chasing. And then I will get Ice Path as a reaction. I will immediately go back to Dual Breath. I want two points in Dual Breath as soon as I can. But most of the time, it's safe to leave uh, till level 4. Now from here, well, let's knock something easy out. Macropire, you're just going to take every level you can. It's very good, 60 seconds. You can use it for a whole bunch of stuff. If there's a huge stack in the enemy jungle, steal it. You need to defend your own base, um, one of your towers, Macropire. A little team fight breaks out, Macropire. There's, there's a lot of uh, applications for Macropire, and it's only 60 seconds, so very good to use. Now from here... We have two choices. What I tend to do is I max Dual Breath, and then I max Ice Path, so that by level 10, I have both of them maxed out, and I skip the level 10 talent for a little bit, because these are not as important as Ice Path's fourth level or Dual Breath's fourth level. I like Dual Breath first, because it will be your tower defending tool, your aggressive tool does a lot for you in that regard. Because you can clear creep waves and possibly jungle camps faster, you get some more golden experience for yourself, which means you'll then level up a little faster to then get points in Ice Path. You can choose to max Ice Path instead and then max Dual Breath after that. The reason I would do this is because my team has damage and they just need the enemies to stand still. So if you have like Huskar, Pugna, Ursa, those kind of heroes on your team that they, they've got a lot of damage and I just I need someone to make them stand still so I can do all my damage, that is when Ice Path is pretty good. If you need to defend your tower because for, I don't know, whatever reason, you have to defend towers, you need to max Dual Breath first because this is your wave clear. Ice Path just, it's got no damage scaling, so it doesn't help you clear waves at all. Uh, for that reason, I think in a lot of pub games, Dual Breath, you will find a way to make use of it. And so I do this probably 70% of games, and the other 30% is when I think all I need to do is add some stuns, and then I'll go this build. But whichever build you do, by level 10, I think both should be maxed out. Now from here, for level 11, I take a talent, and I prefer the attack range. I think it's a lot better. It lets you outrange the tower. It's good against Serpent Wards, Veno Wards, Tombstone, Egg, that kind of thing. Um, but really, it's about being able to apply Liquid Fire safely and be able to stay, like, way in the back of a fight because that is easier to land Ice Paths and Macro Pyres um, when you're further back. And to stay further back and still make use of Liquid Fire, you need attack range. The 6% spell amp just, to me, is not a lot. Like, when I look at the math on them, it just doesn't feel that good. And as a support, I don't feel like my job is damage. I much prefer the utility of this talent. Um, after that, we're going to max Liquid Fire, but you can take the 15 talent too. I think uh, that's fine, kind of straightforward from there, and then the talents like that. Now for your talents, this is our talent discussion here, so that was kind of level 10s. Level 15, I really prefer the Ice Path cooldown. Again, going back to the idea that I think supports are more about utility, and if you need to defend a tower, 
Macro Pyre will always kill off Creep Waves. And Dual Breath, maxed out, plus Liquid Fire, usually enough to mostly kill off a Creep Wave. And then when you factor in some of the damage from your own Creep Wave, like just casting these two typically kills off the enemy Creeps. Eventually, the enemy Creeps do scale to a point where this is not really enough to kill them and they survive. And that is kind of when this Dual Breath burn damage... Like, if you're one job, you have a Naga or a Spectre on your team, and you're kind of losing right now, but you know if we just survive longer, we will win, and they don't really need more stuns. Like, they'll win on their own. I just need to get us there. That is when the burn damage is a little better to keep defending towers. Um, but eh, most of the time, I don't really like it, because if I feel like I'm behind, I also want more stuns uh, to potentially get kills by chain stunning a strong enemy so that they can't actually do anything and hopefully pick up a kill there. So, I'm a fan of the Ice Path talent. I take it almost every single game. In fact, I do the same talents almost every game. Level 20, I think the attack speed is fantastic. With what you already do at level 4, 60, and then this, that has 110 attack speed slow. That is practically a moon shard, a little less. But still, it is a lot. And if you just keep throwing it on the carry, you know, they can dispel it. But I'm just going to apply it again in 4 seconds. You know, they can use a Manta. And now, I'm going to AoE slow all of them, the Illusions and the Hero. It also works on towers, so it helps you with your tower push, all of that. I am a huge fan of this talent. This dual breath range, I think, by level 20, you know, if you've made it to level 20 as a support, usually your team has had some way to deal with the push that the enemy is trying to, like, end the game. If you, as a support, got to level 20, so I don't really find this as useful. Um... And then at level 25, I like the Ice Path duration, especially combos with, with this talent, um, because now it's a 3.5 second stun every 7.5 seconds. That is a lot in AoE stun. And I just, again, I just don't think the pure damage and piercing immunity, it's, it's great. I've seen it work. I, I just don't really think it is your job. I can see it really working, though, if your team has like a BKB piercing stun, like Chronosphere, Black Hole... Um, RP, those kind of spells, but the enemy BKBs, like, all the time, they have some spell immunity. Well, then this can be a way to uh, add in the damage there. But by level 25, I feel like the core should be doing it, so I've never liked these. But to me, it kind of goes all together. So if you're, I think, as a position 5, usually I'm about utility, all that, so I like these. If you're playing Jakiro as a more greedy style, maybe a position 4, then I think all these other talents combo together. You know, your spell amp to do a bit more damage, this dual breath to have more damage, dual breath range because you've already focused so much on dual breath, now we got to cast it further. And then because we're so focused on damage, we've probably built towards it. Then the macro pyre, pure pierces immunity, all that. Um, so it's like all these three and this one or these three and that one, in my opinion. Um, if you're wondering about a liquid fire max build, I don't think it's very good. The first, I've tried it. The first skill point, it's value. The fourth skill point, really good. It's only a four second cooldown. The middle two, not very good. And oftentimes, laning ends around 10 minutes, at which point you're around level six, which means at most you could have three points in liquid fire, which still leaves it at a 10 second cooldown. So if your argument is to harass with it, you know, how much can you harass? Like 10 seconds, just like auto attack in your dual breath. Uh, I think it's the same that way. The only reason I've ever found to max Liquid Fire early is if your team has a super fast push lineup prepared and yet has no tower damage. So you have like a Timbersaw or a Venomancer or like a Sand King. Heroes really good at killing off the enemy creep waves, but then they don't do that much tower damage. Then here you come in. Woo! liquid fire and you hit all the buildings every four seconds because you max this out and you go for a really fast tempo lineup that rarely happens in a pub game so i think dual breath is a lot safer the build i have outlined here i think this is far safer to do if you want to like in a team uh try a draft that does something like that and then you want to max liquid fire go for it but in most pubs i just don't find it very practical now let's talk about itemization. I won't go into the specifics of all of it because a lot of this is just typical support itemization, but I'll say a couple of things unique to Jakiro. 
So starting items, I like something like this. Two tangos, of course, because you're support. Let's focus on the regen, though. Clarities are better nowadays relative to the Enchanted Mango because the Mango keeps getting nerfed. So 100 mana is not even enough to really even cast any spells. You have to have some mana, and then the Mango gives you the rest. Sometimes you need that. I like to have one in case, just in case, you know, they dive the carry or like, oh, here's our chance for a kill. I'll have the Mango, the, the health regen, like, that's not too bad. If you know you have to play the lane, though, you're against a Beastmaster, you have to keep killing boars, or you're with an Ursa who wants to play extremely aggressively, so you have to be in the lane, like, 24-7, then you need Mangoes. Without mana, Jakiro just does not do anything, really, in terms of lane harassment or just playing the lane. So, if you know you have to be in the lane, you gotta get a lot of Mangoes. Probably at least two. Otherwise, you can go for some other support items, which I won't cover here. That's just like, it's it, like if you're going to be a support, you're going to be a, like, these are the items. Um, Sage's Mask, if you're going to build a Basilius, which is kind of good on Jakiro. Plus, this builds into Veil. Vale. Not bad. Jakiro provides a decent amount of magic damage. If your team has a lot of magic damage and kind of looking to play kind of high tempo, I like the Veil. Vale. Um, Vlad's later, so you can like hold on to the Bassy. And then later on, the Vlad's. Not not useful for yourself, really, but if you've got a core like PA, all of that, I like the Vlads. You'll notice we got some small regen items in these early games. It's because Jakiro really needs a lot of mana. So you're still probably going to have to buy a couple clarities along with these uh, regen items if you're casting a decent amount of spells. But your spells are strong, so you want to be able to cast them, so I like all these small regen items. Now, in terms of core items, a lot of these, you know, typical support stuff, you need it, you need it. The Yules, I will mention, is nice for your Ice Path. So anytime I am against a high mobile lineup um, on the enemy team, and I know I need to be part of how we catch these heroes, I like the Yule Scepter. You Yules them, you wait a little bit, and then you Ice Path underneath. If they have a BKB or some other escape, sometimes they can get out just because of the, the way the game works. But a lot of the time, you will stun them as they fall out of Yules, so it's pretty nice. It's also... Uh, Synergizes pretty well with Jakiro. You're slow, so you get some move speed. You've got mana issues, so all that mana. The mana regen did get nerfed, so now it's like even Yules is kind of like not enough for your mana regen, especially if you use Cyclone because it's 175 mana. Um, but I think it's still a pretty solid Jakiro item. Lately, with the, the new shard, I think is pretty good. You can buy shard on Jakiro if you like it, um, especially if your team lacks tower damage or need a little more damage for Roshan, I think this is good. And if they have a lot of strength heroes, that's why you would get the shard. Because the shard does not take up a slot, lately I've been playing with Soul Ring, and I think this is pretty nice, especially if you go with a max Q build. You can use it to take farm here and there when you have a chance. That'll get you more gold, more experience, get you all those levels. Plus it solves some of your mana issues. In the past, I didn't like it because you would buy the Soul Ring, you've got boots, wards, some small items here and there, you use it to farm, and it's like, well, I got the uh, Void Stone for the, the Yules, and now I don't have any I don't have any space for it, so what do I get rid of? Now i got to get rid of one of my items. I didn't like that. It felt slot inefficient. But now, with the Shard, you can buy the Soul Ring, farm up a bit, get the Shard, take up no slots, and then continue to use the Soul Ring for the next couple minutes to then work on maybe one of these items, which will then replace some of your smaller items. Um, so now you get... You get to make use of the Soul Ring for more time, and now I find it useful, especially when combined with the Tranquil Boots. And a lot of these are just um, typical support choices. After that, you know, if you need any of these, you get them. I don't really buy Aether Lens all that often on Jakiro. Uh, I think he has pretty solid cast ranges anyways. I prefer any of these items or, like, some utility stuff for the carry. Greaves, I also don't buy that much on Jakiro. The Arcane Boots does kind of solve his... Um, mana issues, but then he doesn't really buy anything that helps his health issues. If he takes any damage, like, what is there to heal him? Uh, if you go for the full Greaves, sure, but thinking back to, like, I like to stay in the back as Jakiro, that means I'm not really that close to my team to use Greaves. So even though you're a hero that can farm pretty quickly, I have not liked going Greaves because it forces me to be a little closer to my team. You can still get them if your team really needs more team fight presence, or if you're dealing with um, like pick off heroes that'll kill you if you're by yourself anyway. So you do need to be close to your team. Then this kind of items will help uh, more. 
Um, and then, yeah, the rest is just, you know, if you need them, you need them. And if you want, this guide will be uh, linked. So then I'll add a little more description to some of these items. So if you're ever curious, you can uh, check it out there. Uh, for neutral items, you kind of just use what you get. But to highlight a couple that I really like on Jakiro, first off, tier one, when you do finally get to have it, just anything that helps with your mana issues, I think is pretty solid. So that's nifty. The move speed is nice as well. So if I am buying some mana regen items, then I like the faded brooch. But if I still need regen, then I prioritize something that gives me that. I also like the cast range on Keen Optic, as does everyone. Um, tier two. So typical support stuff, of course, the mana regen, blah, blah, blah. I kind of like the Grove Bow, though, guys. The extra attack range, along with the attack talent, along with the bonus range of manually casting Liquid Fire and Liquid Frost, means you can um, attack really far away, and it's really fun. I don't know if it's good, but it's really fun, so I do it a lot. And then the Quicksilver Amulet, I've discovered, helps as well, because you almost you have so many abilities, especially if you buy the Shard. So something is almost always on cooldown. And if you use, say, Liquid Fire, every time you use it, you get some move speed. And you get a little more attack speed, so then you can apply Liquid Frost if you want to use them separately. Um, so this has been kind of fun. But I, I do prioritize my own mana issues usually. So if by the time it gets to Tier 2 and I still have mana issues, then I tend to avoid the fun like Grove Bow, Quicksilver. I go for something else. Tier 3... Anything that reduces your cooldowns, because your abilities are pretty low cooldown already, I think it's even better. Because then you keep throwing out stuns, keep throwing out macro pyres, great stuff. Um, and if you thought Grove Bow was fun, Enchanted Quiver, even more fun. 400 bonus attack range. And the cooldown is fine because you have cooldowns on your, your stuff anyways. If you use Enchanted Quiver, this is a great time to use the, the trick with the, the shard to apply both in one attack. So you can use two... Apply both Liquid Fire and Liquid Frost with one Enchanted Quiver proc. Otherwise, you have to wait a little bit. And then besides that, you know, typical support stuff from there. Uh, Spell Prism, Timeless Relic, really nice. The Telescope. And then, God, do you guys even get into games with Tier 5s? I don't, so who knows from there. All right, now we're going to just go down the line, and I'm just going to talk about every single hero and how I feel about them as a Jakiro player. Just kidding, it would take too long. Unless... No, 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 we won't do it. But I do want to highlight a couple heroes that if you're going to play Jakiro a lot, you should know about. The worst is Rubik. Rubik is actually just a better Jakiro than you are. He cannot steal Liquid Fire, which means he's going to get a great spell no matter what he takes. Ice Path, long cast range, really good spell. Takes a while to cast it. Rubik doesn't have that issue. Cast further than you with his abilities giving cast range. Aether, very frequent Aether lens buyer, has a cast range talent. He can cast this further and faster than you. It stuns for longer because of his debuff. In fact, all your talents, right? Your spell amp, 6%, measly. This guy is 26%. You want more damage on dual breath? 26% spell amp. You want further dual breath cast range? This guy has all his uh all his cast range. This is how far you can cast dual breath. Oops. This is how far uh Ruby can cast dual breath. What the heck? Macro Pyre even goes further. All of your stuff that you need levels for to get talents for, this guy just gets in his skill set. Ice Path is the worst to give to him as well. Uh, it's it's so hard. It's, it's hard to prevent him from stealing it because your cast times are so long. You cast Ice Path. If he's not in it, he's going to steal it from you as you try to cast your next spell. Just ban Rubik. It is the bane of my existence as a Jakiro player. Other annoying matchups, Clockwork's Battery Assault. <laughs> we can probably return to the demo, but we don't really need to. You just can't get a spell off if Battery Assault is going on next to you. He has a way to jump to you with Hookshot and then trap you. You have to buy Force Staff to keep your distance from this guy. And in the lane, it's really irritating. In the game, you have some ways to deal with it like that Force Staff, but it's still pretty, pretty annoying. Now, other things. We don't need to list every single hero, but a couple things Jakiro doesn't like does not like high mobility heroes. People like Queen of Pain, Anti-Mage, um, who else? Puck, those kind of heroes. Ironically, you have a stun, but it's slow. And it's hard to land, 
And so these high mobile heroes who don't really care about your slows and then make it difficult to land the stun, you don't love. You need someone else on your team that has a more reliable stun, such as a Sand King, to stun them. And then you can get the chain stun and it's, it's great. But if it's just you, you're going to have a hard time. He also does not like dealing with dispels in the laning stage. So most notable is Legion Commander, but there's also heroes like Abaddon, Omni Knight, Oracle, people with spell immunity like Lifestealer and Juggernaut. If Dual Breath does nothing to them, that is a big issue. Tidehunter, he's another one. Um, if you can't do anything with Dual Breath, it makes your laning stage really difficult, and you're forced to just do a lot of pulls. So anyone with a Dispel is a pain. Later on, you'll be fine, but in the lane, it's tough. Um, he likes going against slow melee heroes who have to just like run up into the fight because then it's easy to apply even more slows to them so then they're even slower or to just land a lot of stuns. Uh, they get in a line because they're kind of, it's like what that hero does. Um, he also is pretty good against illusion heroes and summon heroes like Beastmaster because of all your AoE damage. Oh, I'll add on. People he likes on his team are... People that go in first and draw the attention of others to make it easier to land Ice Path and all your AoE stuns. Or, kind of like I mentioned earlier, someone who can set up your Ice Path so you don't have to land it. Someone like Sand King. Uh, people that just make your life a little easier. And now for a bunch of miscellaneous tips and tricks. Some of these might be repeated from earlier in the video. My bad, but it'll all be very quick, so I hope you find this helpful. To start off, Liquid Fire and Liquid Frost if I had it. You should cast on this building because it actually applies to both towers. Wow! And the same deal on the other side. Liquid fire this little building here and you affect both towers. Very useful when pushing the enemy base. Against mobile heroes, Yules into your stun is a very reliable combo. However, it is possible to actually BKB out of this combo for whatever reason. You can usually do something instant as you fall out of Yules, so it's not guaranteed in the late game. But you'll get a BKB out of it sometimes, so that's pretty good. Always manually cast your Liquid Fire or Liquid Frost to get bonus 200 cast range on it. If you set it to auto cast and then right click, you'll walk into your usual attack range. And you'll also draw aggro, so if you manually cast it, you won't draw aggro either. Sometimes if I don't have the attack range talent or it's nighttime and I can't see the tower and I still want to apply Liquid Fire or Liquid Frost to it, I will walk in under the tower, cast it, walk out, drop my boots on the ground so that the tower doesn't cancel them, and then pick it up. The high regen from Tranquil Boots typically means you'll quickly regen from the, the tower hits, and you can burn the tower a little bit. Mainly useful on the tier 1 towers, but sometimes also useful on the others if backdoor is still down and you want to apply a little bit more damage. Due to the long cast point on Ice Path, if you think an enemy hero might show up and you don't want to wait to see them and then react with the Ice Path, what you can do is actually fake cast it and then cancel it, and then if they walk in, you don't cancel the cast, and that way you are half a second, literally roughly half a second, faster on the stun than you would be if you wait to see them and then react with the cast. Try to always cast Dual Breath on the ground so that you get to choose where it fires and don't accidentally miss a lined up spell by clicking on the hero and then aiming at where they are instead of where you wanted to intercept them and hit another hero. All of your spells also cast a little further than what they show, so get in the habit of aiming at the ground beyond where you want to cast instead of going to click exactly where you want to stun because you're actually wasting a little bit of distance at the end there and sometimes it'll be a little time sensitive so you want to cast it as soon as you can. I like to cast Ice Path just as Roshan dies in case anyone is trying to steal Aegis and they are trying to blink in, zip in, whatever. Because it's a persisting stun I hope that it'll stun them as they get in there and maybe it'll even be a free kill. Ice Path gives vision along its path, so you can use it to check high ground wards like so, and this will let you put sentries on the ground. Unfortunately, your attack speed is kind of slow, so it's hard to get uh, both wards in one Ice Path cast. It's helpful if you have someone there to help you, or you may just have to cast it twice. When de-warning this cliff, instead of casting Ice Path in this direction, you want to cast it in this direction here, because it's possible to ward these side spots as well. And the same thing applies for this cliff spot as well. If you are defending the tower and then you're about to die, try to macro pyre to kill off the next creep wave. I barely get it off here thanks to the soul ring and you see the direction I'm picking. They even try to fortify to keep their creep wave alive. They know what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to kill off the creep wave. <laughs> it is a little messy. The creeps are all spread out 
in this case. But you get the idea. If the creep wave were walking in, they all die, and you've successfully held the tower for another 30 seconds until the next creep wave gets there. So some final parting tips. Try to play well instead of playing poorly. Try to win your games instead of losing them. That'll help your MMR a lot. Yeah, that's about it. Try Jakiro. I hope you've learned a little bit about him. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you know more about Jakiro. That's cool. Let me know. Leave a comment. All that jazz. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those as well. Happy to help. Thank you for watching the whole video. If you did, if you skipped to the end, thanks for being here as well. Bye, guys.